Hi everyone, okay so this is the introduction before the real introduction for this uh, video tutorial and the reason why I'm doing this is because uh, first and foremost I want to give credit to Matthias Arland uh, he was the person that basically mentioned this SVG process to me and I looked into it a little bit deeper to try and understand it a little bit better and he was basically uh, he encountered a problem where he wanted to convert a, an illustrator file into a 3D object so I'm basically going to be showing you guys how we can do that and then I'll be showing you how we can use the SVG process creatively to speed up our workflow with Infusion 360. Alright, so without further ado, uh, let's head over to the real introduction. Hi everyone. Okay, so for today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use a pretty cool feature in Fusion 360 called Insert SVG. So we'll be using Fusion 360 in uh, conjunction with Adobe Illustrator. And the reason why we'll be using Adobe Illustrator is because we'll be converting these vector images into the SVG format that's required for Fusion 360. So now uh, this particular method is actually going to be really useful if you want to turn... Uh, let's say you've created a logo in Adobe Illustrator and you want to turn that logo into a 3D object. Uh, that you can maybe later even turn into merchandise that you can 3D print, uh, you'll be able to do that. Uh, so again, once we're in Adobe Illustrator, and uh, as you can see, we're working with a vector image over here, we want to make sure that the vector image has all of these anchor points applied to it. So this particular method will not work with any rasterized images. You have to make sure that it is a vector image. Uh, and for those of you that have never worked with Adobe Illustrator, a, vec a vector image, uh, can basically be rescaled to any size without uh, losing uh, any of the image quality or fidelity that you see uh, once it's been created. So, uh, for example, I've downloaded this uh, just a random logo from Shutterstock. Uh, you guys can obviously just go on Google and find something uh, that you can work with. Uh, usually the vector files that you're going to receive are going to be uh, in EPS format or Adobe Illustrator, you'll see, uh, actually let me open up that folder, logo design, you'll see over here that the majority of these are in .eps format, so once you open that up in Illustrator, uh, you're going to get your vector file over here. So let's say we've designed a logo and we want to turn this into something 3D, we can do that with Fusion 360 really easily. So what we want to do is, we've got our, our file over here, just want to make sure everything's selected, Actually delete, you can delete this background image for now. So I'll just select this, delete. Uh, but we'll make sure that our graphics, the entire, uh, all of this is selected. And then you want to go to File, Save As. I'm going to save this to Fusion 360. So I'll say Shutterstock, Converted. And you'll see under uh, Save As Type, we've got SVG Format. So you want to make sure that's selected. And I'll keep that as Shutterstock and just say Save. You don't have to adjust any of these settings, just click on OK. So now when we head back into Fusion 360, we just have to go to Insert, Insert SVG. Uh, we have to select a plane, so I'm going to select the bottom plane. And then we'll click on this folder icon, we'll go to our folder where the F uh, SVG was saved. And I'm going to open up my sh uh, Shutterstock uh, vector image. Now you'll see that it, it has been inserted into Fusion 360, but this file is actually quite large. So we just want to scale this down a little bit, so I'll do that right now. Um, we'll just go to Scale Plane XY, and I'll say 0 0.50. And then we'll just move this into place, so I'll just bring it to the center uh, origin point. All right, that should be fine for now, and then I'll click on OK. As soon as I click on OK, you'll see that uh, we've actually got this entire outline, and that's why I said it's important that uh, this is a vector image because all of those points, you can see over here, all of those points that we see in Illustrator that were created probably using the pen tool uh, have now uh, basically allowed us to select this entire object and obviously we can be selective with what we want to select with our vector image. So uh, just for this example, I'm going to select this bird and then I'll right click and you can see I can go to extrude and we can automatically just extrude that up and there you go we've basically turned a a simple vector image from Adobe Illustrator into a 3D object now like I said since this is Fusion 360 we can go ahead and maybe even 3D print this and turn it into merchandise 
So this is a really cool method for creating 3D logos. And then of course we can apply all of the usual, uh, the usual functions uh, to the rest of this object. You'll see I'm applying a fillet there. You can come back, apply a fillet to this edge, holding down control, select that fillet value to that edge as well. Then of course you can go back, maybe apply a little bit of a fillet value to the top. Uh, obviously we'll have to, since that is not the exact same size, uh, we're actually going to have to play around with the size of the radius over here, so maybe 0.20. Uh, but anyway, you guys can see that we can turn. Okay, so this has been really, well, it wants my value to be quite small. So anyway, I'll have to play around with that, but I'm just showing you guys that you can bring a vector into Fusion 360, extrude it, and then apply these uh, the usual functions to it. And then, of course, we can maybe even select this as a plane and continue uh, modifying this within Fusion 360. So let's say I wanted to add some more circles to it. And then, of course, it just follows the same basic principles that we use within Fusion 360. All right, so that's how you would basically turn a vector into a 3D object. Now you also you, you uh, saw earlier that I actually had some texture. Now same thing applies to this. Again, since this was typed out in Illustrator, it's got all of these anchor points, so we can do the exact same thing uh, to the text as well. We can turn it into some 3D text, extrude that up, and there you go. All right, so now I'm actually going to be showing you guys how we can use this method uh, to speed up our workflow. So we're going to be working smart now and not hard. <laughs> and that's what I believe in, uh, that we should actually work smart uh, when we design stuff like this in Fusion 360. So I'll show you how we can increase our speed using uh, the SVG in Fusion 360. All right, so we'll do that next. All right, so this is the method that I'm going to be showing you guys. I'm going to head back into Illustrator and you'll see over here, again, I just went on Google. I just found some a random uh, free vector image of some gears. And of course, we can create all of this in Fusion 360. But like I said, we're trying to work smart or we're just trying to be lazy. <laughs> but uh, let's say there's a particular gear over here that we really like. Uh, we can speed up the process. So I'm going to create a new document here. I'll just say with We'll say 1,200 by 1,200. And then I'm going to use the direct selection tool. Let's say I want to use this gear over here, right? We can do all of this in Fusion 360. But like I said, let me show you something really cool. I'm going to select this gear. Now you'll see that it's not selecting the entire gear. Uh, if I use this, this is obviously going to select everything. But I just want that gear in particular. So I'm going to use this selection tool, select that gear, go on my layers panel. And just look for that red, that red dot. So it's in one of these, one of these folders over here. So let me just find it quickly. There we go. We've got the red dot. So I just have to click on this target, and it'll select the entire gear. And uh, I can go ahead and close this. Now from here, I'm just going to drag this gear onto this canvas, and I'll go back to the selection tool and just scale this up a little bit. Right, so let's say we want to insert some gears into our scene. Uh, and we feel more comfortable working in Adobe Illustrator, we can create that vector in Illustrator. And then just like what we did with the logo, we'll save this out as an SVG. So I'll just say gear.svg. And then again, rinse and repeat process, we'll insert SVG, bottom plane, go to our folder. Okay, where is our gear? Did it save our gear? Oh, I forgot to click on OK. <laughs> My bad. So we click on OK. All right, now we can insert that gear. And again, it's quite large, so we just want to scale that down. 0 0.50. Just bring that up. Center it. As soon as we click on OK, again, since it's a vector, it's giving us the freedom to select different parts of that vector. And then from here, I can just go to extrude. So we've just saved ourselves a bunch of time. Because if we're going to have to do this manually, we'd have to use a center diameter circle. Get we would have to sketch out all of these circles. And we'd have to create a cut and pattern this 360 degrees. 
So, uh, like I said, just to work a little bit smarter and a little bit faster, we can use vectors to create these basic shapes for us really quickly with Infusion 360. All right, again, uh, just to show you one more uh, method, I actually just went on Google, found some random images of keys. And again, this method works really well for flat objects, or this could be just a basic starting point for you. And then you can continue building on top of this with Infusion 360. So, for example, if you've got a key like this with all of these different shapes, uh, we can do this in Infusion 360, but it is going to take us quite a little bit of time. So, again, if we just want to increase our overall uh, speed with Fusion 360, we can use a simple vector like this to get the overall shape. So I'm making sure that that intersects with my key, obviously, and then selecting both of those. I'll just rescale this, and then I'll save this as a SVG. And then again, we'll go into Fusion 360, insert SVG on the, oops, on the bottom plane. All right. And then again, it's quite large, just rescale that 0 0.50 and we'll just move it to the origin. That should be fine. And then again, we can go ahead and select these individual pieces and we can go to extrude. And just like that, we've got a key within Fusion 360. So we saved ourselves quite a lot of time and obviously, if you're doing uh, something from scratch, you want your own unique key designs, uh, then obviously you're going to have to go the long route. But like I said, I'm just showing you guys how you can save yourself a little bit of time using uh, vector images in Fusion 360. And then just coming back into the program and applying fillets and chamfers to certain edges. Uh, so like I said, it's a good starting point. And then from here, you can just continue building on top of this. So... Yeah, it'll increase your speed uh, dramatically. I've been using this recently uh, just to help uh, with uh, overall with certain shapes because I know we have the line and the spline tool with Infusion 360, but I feel like I get a lot more control over certain anchor points within Illustrator. So sometimes I'll just go into Illustrator and draw a, a particular shape and then just bring it into Fusion 360 and extrude it. All right. All right, guys, and just to wrap up this tutorial, you aren't just limited to inserting an SVG onto a random plane. Let's say, okay, let's create a cylinder quickly, a center diameter circle. So I'll just create a quick cylinder, extrude this up, and let's just apply, let's just apply some fillets to these edges. But let's say we've already got a piece of a geometry within our scene and we want to apply an SVG to that object. So let's say... Uh, you've created something and you want a logo to apply uh, to be applied uh, to that object. Uh, what we what we have to do is we go to insert insert SVG. Now instead of selecting one of these planes, we can select a plane on our object. So I'll select this top plane over here, and then just like what we did before, I'm going to go ahead and I'll select that Shutterstock logo again. Uh, I'll just bring that. I'm going to rotate this. Let's rotate this quickly. 180 degrees and then just bring it to the center here and I'll just scale this down so 0 0.60 all right and we can place that in the center again as soon as we click on OK now we can go ahead and select this and we can choose if you want to extrude this or we can create a cut into our object so let's see I'm about to do that simple cut and there we go so yeah guys you can use this tool quite creatively uh, if you just want to basically create cuts using the vector or if you want to use it as a simple uh, starting tool uh, for creating uh, more complex uh, objects and shapes with Infusion 360 all right, I hope you guys have learned something useful from this tutorial. Go ahead, play around with the SVG function with Infusion 360. You can also use SVG in forms. I haven't played around with SVG in forms yet, uh, but I know the option is available in there. So uh, go ahead, guys, have some fun. You now understand the method for importing vectors into Fusion 360 and using them. Uh, so go ahead, have some fun, 
and create something awesome all right guys all uh, right so thanks for watching and stay tuned for some more tutorials all right goodbye